Hello, Mighty Miners, and any other friends that are joining us today. This is Mr. Keith with Mr. Keith's Content. Today for Mr. Keith's Content, we're going to be focusing on Mount Rushmore. Now, I could say that I was actually born not too far from Mount Rushmore, so I've had the privilege to actually see it multiple times. Before we get into the book, though, let's look at our vocab. Our first vocab word that we need to know for this is historian. A historian is someone who studies the written history or record of people of the past. Second, sculptor. A sculptor is an artist who carves work of art from rock, clay, or some other material. Site. Site is a location or a place. And finally, symbol. Symbol is something that stands for something else as a flag stands for a country. Mount Rushmore. They died long ago, but four of America's greatest presidents still live on Mount Rushmore. The likenesses of the presidents are carved into the mountain rock. Much larger than life, the great stone faces stare at the Black Hills of South Dakota. Like the presidents themselves, the heads of stone have become symbols of American ideals. Faces in the Rock The stone faces on Mount Rushmore remind people of more than just four presidents. They are symbols of what those four presidents stood for. George Washington, who was right here, was known for his courage in the battle and battlefield skill. His leadership led to America's freedom from England in 1783. Abraham Lincoln, on the far right side, is remembered for his firm belief in a united nation and freedom for everyone. Thomas Jefferson, second on this, wrote much of America's Declaration of Independence. Teddy Roosevelt, tucked away right here, was a champion of natural resources. Robinson's idea. The idea of faces on granite rock of the Black Hills was Doan Robinson's. Robinson was South Dakota's state historian. He wanted the faces of Western heroes, such as Kit Carson, in the Needles. The Needles is a jumble of tall, pointed rock in Custer State Park. Robinson invited a sculptor, Gutson Borglum, to the Black Hills in 1924. Sculptors carve or model subjects in such things as bronze, copper, clay, and rock. Borglum's better idea. Borglum had a better idea. Why not, he said, make a memorial of interest to all Americans? Borglum wanted to carve the images of presidents instead of frontier heroes. The idea took off. Borglum chose Mount Rushmore as a work site or location in place of the needles. Rushmore faced the sun most of the day. At 5,725 feet above sea level, it stood well above the land nearby, and the sculptor knew he could shape the smooth granite face of Mount Rushmore. You'll notice in this picture that this is not actually Mount Rushmore on the mountain. It is just a model that they had come up with. Through the years, though, they actually had to change the model a couple of times to be able to fit it in. The man standing here, his name is Lincoln Borglum. Lincoln Borglum was actually the son of the guy who came up with the idea to put the presidents on the Mount Rushmore. Shaping a Mountain's Face Bringing the images of four presidents to Mount Rushmore was a giant task. The faces were too huge to be actually carved. The rock would have to be shaped by removing sections of the rock with dynamite. Borgum's workers began the project on August 10, 1927. President Calvin Coolidge made Mount Rushmore a national memorial on that same day. This was actually a very key thing because making it a national monument helped free up some money to make it easier to build Mount Rushmore. The new faces on the mountain. Workmen drilled holes in the rock to plant dynamite. 
Before the job was completed, 450,000 tons of Mount Rushmore had been blasted away, as if by magic, the faces of the four presidents began to appear in the granite. Finally, in 1941, the job was finished. Guts and Borglum died early in 1941, leaving his son Lincoln to finish the project. Originally, Borglum thought that it would only take maybe four years to actually do this, but you can see they started in 1927 and didn't finish until 1941. The Faces of Giants If the four presidents are giants in American history, they are no less giants on the mountain. Each head averages 60 feet from chin to top, the height of a five-story apartment. The mouths average 18 feet across. Each nose is about 20 feet long. Borgum loved supersized carvings, but he explained that they should be saved only for people and events that were of giant importance. We can see in the picture over here just how large the face is if we take a look at this man who is scaling down the side of it. Mountain men. Just who are those men on the mountain? George Washington became the first president after leading the American army to victory against the British. That was from 1775 to 1783. Thomas Jefferson was the nation's third president, an inventor and the founder of the University of Virginia. Lincoln, as, the president, as president, held the nation together during America's Civil War. America's Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865. And President Theodore Roosevelt, who was president from 1901 to 1909, created the first national forest and wildlife refuges. Visiting Mount Rushmore. A short trail from the visitor center at Mount Rushmore National Memorial offers a grand view of the mountains. Other short trails through the 1,278 acres of Pinewood also lead to mountain views. Mount Rushmore is 25 miles southwest of Rapid City and two miles from Keystone, South Dakota. The memorial has no lodges or campgrounds. Visitors make day trips. Well, I hope you learned something new about this American symbol of Mount Rushmore, and maybe it'll inspire you that someday you will go up to South Dakota and visit it yourself. Until next time, friends.